In this video we present our work, Modeling Full Body Human Musculoskeletal System and Locomotion Control with Hierarchical Low Dimensional Representation. We build a dynamic model of full body human musculoskeletal system and embed it in a simulation environment that supports contact interaction simulations for data-driven control. And then we design a hierarchical deep reinforcement learning algorithm with low dimensional representation for the control of the high dimensional and highly nonlinear model. We can generate desired motions in full body musculoskeletal model as demonstrated. The vast majority of our daily movements require the use of the entire body. Walking and running utilize swings and stances of lower limbs to provide propulsion, combined with swings of upper limbs to balance the body and help to accelerate, and trunk muscles are needed to maintain stability of the torso. However, there is no available musculoskeletal model that represents the entire human body, and existing algorithms can hardly learn the very high-dimensional control policy of full-body human musculoskeletal movements. We build a dynamic model of a whole-body human musculoskeletal system named MS Human 700, which has 90 rigid body segments, 206 joints, and 700 muscle tendon units. The model is simulated in the Mujoko engine. We also embed an open-source exoskeleton model in simulation to demonstrate human-machine interactive walking. In another environment, we replace the right calf and foot of the model with a prosthetic and add a crutch to its right hand to demonstrate its resistance to external disturbances and imitate gait under pathological conditions. We set the position, mass, and inertia properties of each body segment to enable dynamic simulation of the model. The shape of each body segment is defined with mesh files, reserving their convex hulls for collision calculation during simulation. The body segments are connected mainly by hinge joints. There are also slide joints to represent translational characteristics between segments. The axis and range of motion of each joint are defined in the model. Muscle tendon units exert tensile forces on bones to move joints. The maximum force and length range are defined to perform a simulation where muscle forces are calculated from neural excitations. The muscle tendon units typically originate and are inserted at pathway points attached to different body segments. For wide muscle attachments, it will be modeled as multiple independent muscle tendon units. Wrapping geometry surfaces are added to the pathways to model physical constraints imposed by bones and soft tissue when needed. The activation contraction dynamics of muscles exhibit nonlinearity and temporal delay, thereby posing challenges to neuromuscular control. In our problem setting, the agent generates neuromuscular action in a 700-dimensional space to control the musculoskeletal simulation. The full-body model can interact with robots and devices in the environment and return the designed reward and state in the simulation to the agent. By simulating human movements with a musculoskeletal model, it is possible to gain insight into the dynamics of the human body, such as muscle activation patterns and joint stability. We can use simulation data like contact force and relative velocities, which could be hard to collect in real experiments, to design and optimize robots such as exoskeletons, prosthetics, and even humanoids. To address high-dimensional decision-making problems, we aim to find an effective low-dimensional representation that can be mapped back to the original high-dimensional space, enabling the agent to make decisions within a lower-dimensional space. Therefore, we employ an encoder-decoder architecture to encode and decode the sampled muscle activations, utilizing the decoder to complete the reconstruction. Here, inspired by the SAR and other algorithms, we adopt a similar structure, which is a combination of PCA and ICA. Firstly, we need sufficiently effective data to train the encoder-decoder, but due to the high difficulty of the full-body walking task, it is challenging to collect effective data directly through training. Therefore, we divide the entire algorithm into two stages. The first stage is called the collection stage, where we simplify the task by utilizing physiological priors, activating the torso muscles in groups to reduce the action dimensions. In this stage, the agent generates low-dimensional muscle cluster actions. With the incorporation of physiological priors, these actions are remapped to the full-body muscle control space. The simulator then provides the model simulation status. For reward design, we employ imitation learning, utilizing optical motion capture data. We apply inverse kinematics to convert marker coordinates into joint angles and design rewards based on these joint angles. Subsequently, the agent learns from observation and reward. After the training in the first phase, we can sample enough data to train the encoder-decoder. In the second stage, which is the training stage, the agent only needs to generate a low-dimensional action in the latent space. This action is then reconverted back to the original high-dimensional space by the decoder and the policy training is completed in a manner similar to the first stage. 
Finally, combining these two phases together, we present our proposed algorithm for controlling high-dimensional musculoskeletal models. To conduct an effective comparison, we design three tasks. The first is the walking task, on which the benchmark algorithm can hardly produce effective movement, while our algorithm can effectively control the high-dimensional model to walk forward. Next is the task of human-exoskeleton interaction, where we expect the contact force between the human and the exoskeleton to be sufficiently small and the upper limbs to remain stable. The results show that our algorithm also performs well. Finally, we wanted to verify the performance under different model conditions. We hope that the model can walk forward while wearing a prosthesis and using a crutch. The results also indicate that our algorithm outperforms other algorithms. Here is demonstrated a comparison of the performance of all algorithms across the three tasks. In summary, we have proposed a physiologically feasible dynamic model of the full-body human musculoskeletal system and a motor control algorithm for it. Thank you.